we'll use the example of pull together. And I didn't come up with it. Who wrote this? I think Ryan was talking about this. What's his last name? Zur? No, no. He's like on Twitter nonstop. Ryan something. Let me pull it up. Fair. Real time. We'll get, we'll, <laughs> we want to do justice over here and get his real name, Shadow. I want to give credit where credit is due. Um, well, if you just say Ryan, then like you can Ryan, like just hit. Ryan Sean Adams. Here, I was just, if you just didn't give you know, his last you name. You see number, but. Um, I, I think so. Super Ethereum guy. Um, <laughs> He, he, he tweeted an interesting idea, taking the idea of pool together. So let's say you and I have a software company and the software is $20 a month. Instead of me paying you $20 a month, my lockage of my DAI or whatever crypto, the interest from that yeah. they can use. Yeah. So I'm technically getting the software for free because of my opportunity cost of me deploying to somewhere else. I'm not getting that. Now the question, are you really a software company or are you a bank? That's a good point. I mean, like at that point, your bank because you're deploying that money. You're not just saying, "Oh, here, I'm going to give," it to, or I'm just going to sit it here. No, like right now, die. Let's say if it's like eight percent, that's not going to last. It's probably going to get to like two, three percent, some stability, right? Maybe back to like banking rates. It used to be two percent. Then pretty much it's like a zero sum game. It's winner take all, mm -hmm. right? It's like the more you have, the more kind of interest in deployment. So at that point, you're pretty much kind of like a bank slash hedge fund. Well, your software is just a lead generation tool on the front end. Well, yeah. If if you think about like a lot of like the what what blockchains are like, every time like I start to explain things like make your doubts like there's like you're describing a bank to me. Like this yeah, is what a bank does. Yeah, yeah. Like if you can tap into decentralized networks, and, and since everything to do with blockchain has some sort of value transfer involved with it, every time you change state, you have to move some Ethereum. Um, then technically, almost every application is by definition a bank, or every DApp is by definition kind of some sort of bank. If you're really tapping into these power and decentralized networks of it. So maybe that's our somewhat answer of like, what are we creating? We're creating like um, decentralized banks for everybody or everybody can be their decentralized bank. You can literally create your software, which it does something, but in the background, it's really a bank and that's how you actually create your business model. Yeah. I mean, that's cool. I'm yeah. actually more excited now than I was when I came yeah, on. That's one interesting thing. You know, another interesting thing too is um, I, I know a lot of Bitcoiners shit on tokens. Um, and they have, there's reasons why to, I you know for the most part, we're in the early stage. I think a lot of these tokens are useless. Oh, absolutely. Like <laughs> completely useless. <laughs> now I'm also a firm believer where I think we will see in the future a type of new Facebook. We don't have to call it decentralized, but it's going to be more or less that everybody kind of wins on the upside of it. And so it can be a combination of two things within this new type of blockchain uh, called a social media platform, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, whatever, right? Right, right. One, I, I know we're super early on this. Blockstack was one of the first ones, I think, was it like Reg A or Reg D? They did a securitized token. They registered with the SEC, et cetera. We're super early. There's no, like, can't really get liquidity for it. There's not too many market makers for it. So takes time to mature, to build out the ecosystem, both the buy and sell pressures. Let's say we're at that point, right? There's liquidity and mm -hmm. there's exchanges, it's regulated. You and I, let's say this new social media platform comes around, they're doing kind of like an STO and they're raising money, maybe on like a series B, series C, not originally, they have sure. to get momentum. I want to be part of it because I'm fucking using it, right? So I, I give money. We, as the initial users, we have upside now with this. Mm -hmm. So I think something like this will eventually happen. We can have then like, whether it's DAI or, or Ether, or it should be open entity. You can use any crypto within this social media platform. But you and I have a token now that represents ownership, that represents shares, depending on how much I buy, I can represent my voting rights in it as well, depending on how they kind of label the different token, the token within it. So it's kind of like a method of like turning regular users or like into, into owners, super users. Into yeah, owners. into owners. Yeah, even super, into something that maybe we don't actually the thing, see. The thing with before is like, it was all about deal flow and accessibility. Like the, if you weren't part of the Silicon Valley elites, you wouldn't have access to anything, right? So imagine you and I create this system and we have to go through the proper channels it's going to be regulated, but like... And by this definite, we're on our Series B already. So it's not like we don't even have that Silicon Valley. Yeah, yeah. I don't recommend too. this isn't a system where you oh, just raise capital from not. day one. Yeah. Like you want to still get private investors in and build out your model, get the scale. And then once you want to really hyperscale, then you kind of... And through. you already have a working app in your hands that has users yeah. too. So like, yeah. Stuff like that is, I think we're really fucking early though. But I, 
I see that happening. But then again, this is this is like a permissioned, complete, you know, sanctioned, secured, uh, regulated type of platform. So it's like kind of like the maker down model trickling down into like everyday life where people are actually voting on what they think their interest rate should be. And people are actually trying to take a stake in the company itself because they themselves are kind of technically owners with the maker down token. Yeah, like I think I know at one point in the blockchain space, there was a hype for curation, um, bonding curves. Right. I'm not in the camp that I believe everybody has a right to vote. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, uh, but all right, maybe like everybody should have a right to vote, but maybe not everybody should vote or they should take it. There has to be some skin in the game. Yeah. Whether you are, when I mean by skin in the game, there has to be reper- risk. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I've actually like talked about that idea, especially when I was learning about Create2 for the first time. It's like you can create code and then it it can like fully automatically interact. But like if you vote for the wrong value, you actually get those tokens burned. And the people who vote for the right one actually get like a portion of the tokens from the, the burned or mm-hmm. like the losers. Um, so yeah, there's probably, there is a lot of like value to that. The only issue is when I brought that all up is the amount of percent of people that actually vote in the Ethereum space already is already very low. And people aren't like, people aren't like trying to like, oh, how can we make that lower, make it more difficult for people to vote? They're trying to bang the door open so that you get like 100% of people or like a large percent of people like but voting. Let's say I'm a regular user and I'm a regular, like a dabbler within Ethereum. Why do I even care to vote? Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. And that's probably one of like the most like fearful I am for Polkadot. Like I've never voted in Ethereum. I have nothing to gain. Yeah, I mean, I voted for a few DAO stuff, but it was mainly because like, like, there were small DAOs. Yeah, you know? yeah. But has not like for me, I have nothing to gain. I have nothing to lose. I'm like, what's the purpose of me voting? Mm-hmm. I have zero skin in the game here. Well, I mean, what they say was when they talk about the tokens is that, you know, you're voting on things that govern the token that you're holding. I'm not so a developer. Right. I'm not an engineer. The fuck do I know what's going on? It's, that's the fair point. I mean, and and again, yeah, a lot of people talk about, you know, getting more people to vote in these decentralized networks, but, you know, you also make a very fair point, which I do consider is like, does, should everybody be voting? Like, is that like our biggest goal to get everybody to vote or people who vote are the people who really, really care and really, really sit down, research and, you know, should have a say? Well, for the most part, it's always a select few to control everybody. So you bring up Maker, you know, there are people out there who've bought the Maker token that have an incentive to buy the token and to put in the votes based on their incentive models. It's mm-hmm. all about incentive models. You can see why people behave based on incentive uh, feedback mechanisms. You know, Maker is an interesting stuff. Um, see what happens with DAI. You know, I have no idea now they're doing multi-collateral. Multi-coll- yeah. There's pros and cons to that. Um, but it's still... I think DAI, I'm more in the camp. There might, I don't know how they're building out the multi-collateral. I think DAI is an interesting product, really interesting. I think if it can hold its peg, there's a lot of use case for it. But I'll never, ever, ever see it in, I don't know, maybe I'm proven wrong, but at least as of today, I don't see it being used as money. That's fair. I mean, like, I can't complain. I haven't used it for money. I think I bought a drink at a bar once with it. But, like, yeah, other than that, I I don't. You're right. <laughs>